excited to be here today on the set, coming to you by way of television. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, my awesome, extraordinary, wonderful wife, Bradella Hall Walker. She's on the set today. Thank uh, you. Yes, give her a big God bless you. Wonderful. We have an awesome show set up for you today. You are going to be touched, moved, and inspired as we share with you our journey to greatness. I got to let you in on something. Listen, don't touch that dial because you are in for a treat today. We celebrated this week, we celebrated 32 years of marriage. Hey, hey, hey. Listen, some of you have probably never visited Charleston, but I'm going to tell you, Charleston, South Carolina wow. was awesome. awesome. I was shocked. You know, I was born and raised in uh, Detroit, and so... Uh, most of the things that I like is Florida and, and uh, California and a little town like Charleston. I was really shocked. You don't get mad at me, though, who live in Charleston. Um, but I tell you what, that's a great city. We Beautiful. had an awesome, wonderful time. Yes. But before we go any further, I, listen, and all of my family members, don't get stressed out. I'm coming to Detroit, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't. I would not come that close. We're going to come and do our mm -hmm. book signing in Detroit, Michigan. Yes. My hometown, I'm telling you what, Motown, I had a great time growing up. I'm telling you what, what an exciting uh, childhood I had in the city of Detroit. And also, uh, we moved from there, and uh, we were in Chicago. I, I, I went out to uh, cold country. I went to school in Ellendale, North Dakota. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? A black man going to school out there. My goodness. Listen, it was amazing. I Listen, I was the only... African American in the freshman class. Wow. And they voted me class president. Wow. I was shocked. <laughs> I said, do they know who I am? <laughs> I'm off the streets of Detroit, just gave my heart to the Lord, and, and uh, now I'm the president of the freshman class. I said, do you all know what y'all doing? <laughs> But that marked my leadership. Oh, I tell you what, funny. I realized the power of my leadership and how gifted I was as I led that student body there was just awesome. Then I, I took on uh, a, um, a position as chairman of the Drug and Alcohol Ministry. That's I traveled great. all over the Dakotas preaching to thousands. When I gave my heart to the Lord, I was preaching immediately to thousands. Mm. I mean, just sharing my story, and it was just it, Incredible, That's just good. awesome. So I want to give a shout out to, believe it or not, Trinity Bible College in Ellendale, hey! North Dakota. Hey! Listen, we shout out to just all of our friends and family. <laughs> we got to get going with what I want to talk about today. This has been an extraordinary week for me and my anniversary. Just wonderful, magnificent to being married. 23, uh, excuse me, 33 years, 32, going on 33. I'm really excited about that because I've learned some secrets, and we want to talk about prayer. We, we, I know mm -hmm. we've talked about it in previous shows, and I've always talked to you about something, and I never was able to present it to you. Well, tonight's tonight. That's good. I'm going to present to you the letter that I wrote over 32 years ago to God. Wow. I'm going to read that letter. I'm going to read that letter to you oh, tonight. Wow. Oh, my Lord, I'm so excited. That's if you notice here, the, um, the envelope is yellow, of course, because it was white when I wrote it to God. <laughs> it's been some years, but I've had this letter for a number of years that I wrote to God. See, you got to understand something. I grew up in the streets of Detroit, and uh, life for me wasn't the best. And then when I got shot in the head and was left for dead, in the streets of Detroit, I, I came to myself. And it reminds me of the prodigal son. The scripture says, the word of God talks about it, he came to himself. Well, I got to a place where I came to myself. And I realized that I could not continue to live that type of life. Mm. And so I gave my heart to the Lord. And uh, I was a, a very nice-looking young ma man back then. And uh, the girls just wouldn't stay away from me. I mean, I just couldn't keep them. <laughs> I just couldn't keep the women. I'm telling you, I tried, and I tried, and I tried. And, uh, I mean, I really did. I was like, you know, hey, I was fighting them off, okay? But they kept coming. They kept coming. Oh, my God. 
And so I love God with all my heart. God had delivered me, set me free. My life where I was messed up, jacked up, tore up from the flow up, just messed up. God delivered me and set me free, and I was excited, ignited, enthused, and infused because now I'm anointed and appointed. That's good. But I'm out. Yes. That's good. Come on, give it up for the Lord. It's all right. Listen, listen. But in that, there was this issue that I needed a wife because I found myself falling. I found myself not living holy before God. Uh, I found myself falling into temptation and then justifying it. Well, you know, hey, I ain't nobody's perfect. And, and then still getting up, sharing the gospel, feeling so unclean, feeling so uh, like I had forsaken God as a man of God, failed God. So I knew I needed a wife. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, no doubt in my mind, I don't have the gift, okay? So I sought the Lord. I said, God, I need me a wife. Yeah, Paul talks about, you know, staying single. And I did try that. I tried. I said, I'm going to be a monk. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I did. I said, I, 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 I want to wow. try that. It didn't work. I tried. Uh, are you all with me? Y'all yes. don't know what a monk is? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, well, yes. Okay. So that, that, that's where, because I was to please God. And Paul had talked about that it was better to stay single because you could be about the Father's business without distractions. Right. And I said, wow, well, I want to be about God's business. You know, I don't want no distractions, so let me focus on God. So I really gave it my best, but my best wasn't good enough. Wow. And so I got along with God one day because the young ladies that, that I was seeing it wasn't the best of young ladies. Uh, one young lady just that I met in Chicago, I just thought she was everything. Next thing I know, she's smoking crack cocaine. That was a devastating thing for me because uh, I thought she had it going on. And, and But anyway, I said, God, I need a wife. So I met this Caucasian young lady, and so I started dating her. And uh, I said, this, this ain't going to work. I said, I know what I want. You know how you know what you want? I know that you know. I said, I know what I want. And none of this is happening. This ain't it. But I know what I want. So I said, I'm going to pray. So to, to, today, we're going to talk about the power of prayer. That's good. Because I got a hold of God, and I wrote him a letter. And I said, dear God, I know the camera can't zoom in on it, but that's okay. It says, dear God, uh, keep in mind, this is 30... To over 32 years ago. And then you all can bring the verdict. Because this is what I asked God for. And I want the jury, I'm going to present the facts. Then I need you to bring a, a verdict, guilty or not guilty, for Fidella Hall Walker. Because as far as I'm concerned, she's guilty. But let's bring the facts. Dear God, I pray. This date, now listen, the date is 11 11, 1984. Wow. That you would bless me with a wonderful wife that loves you and has good inner qualities, such as compassion for people and the loss, a humble spirit towards others, clean. Neat, strong in the spirit of your might, charisma, and Christ-like character. Optimistic, playful at times, honest, trustworthy, faithful to me. Intelligent, in parenthesis, common sense. <laughs> Last but not least, black with pretty outward appearance. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. <laughs> Love always, Randall Hall Walker. Wow. The power of prayer. Wow. The power of prayer. Wow. Listen, 
I had all the opposite of this, every last one of them, <laughs> the opposite. And I knew, I was smart enough to say, I know what doesn't work, I know what I don't want, I know what I can't have and not going to have and refuse to have and staying away from have. <laughs> I knew that. And so I flipped the script. I was smart enough to focus on the difference that I wanted to make in this world. and I knew what I needed. And lo and behold, make a long story short, I met this darling, darling baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. My sweet and sexy lady. Oh my God, I forgot I'm on Christian yeah. television. Again. God has truly blessed me with everything I asked. But I was specific. I asked God to the T what I wanted. And I wrote it down. That's why it says, write the vision down. Make it plain. If you want something from God, write God a letter. Write it in a vision uh, that you see and write it down. Document it and say, dear God, I put on that. I, I put on that. This was, letter was not going to nobody but God. Okay? Wow. Nobody but God. This letter here went to God. And I said, dear God, I was serious as a heart attack. And I wrote God this letter. And sure enough, you all bring the verdict, guilty or not guilty. Guilty. You've been guilty of charge. That's the power of prayer. Wow. So you that are watching by way of television, I want to encourage you that whatever you want from God, I'm here to tell you today, sit down and write God a letter. Get serious and say, dear God, I'm writing you this letter. And write and address it. I addressed the letter and I signed it. With, I said, love always, I told God. Love always, signed, Randall Hall Walker. And write that letter, make it plain, that vision, and publish it. I, I let the world know, once God blessed me, I let them know that God had heard my prayer, had heard my cry, had heard my heart, and blessed me with this awesome woman. And we are celebrating 30, 32 years of marriage, going into 33. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. <laughs> Moving. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. Yes. Ain't no stopping us. Now I got, okay, I forgot I'm on Christian television. <laughs> we come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, <laughs> trusting in his holy word. Mm. He never Prayer, prayer works. In just a moment, I want to pray for you. And we're going to pray that God gives you the desires of your heart. To set your affections on things above and not on things on earth. But you have to guard your heart. See, I, I had to guard my heart because out of the, my heart are the issues of life. And I had to focus on that issue that I had that was working against me. And I had to switch that issue into the issue of asking God for what I needed. And God heard my cry. And I'm here to tell you today, he answers prayer. You have to have confidence to know that God hears your request. And we're going to pray for you in just a moment, but I want to hear from my darling, darling baby. <laughs> Give her a big God, Thank wonderful you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. Thank you all so much. I, I was really surprised that it's really a token uh, of love for him to read that I've never seen the letter. He's read it to me maybe twice, and I had never seen it. And to hear it today is just as fresh as when he read it to me. Because when we met, 
it was under such weird circumstances and I, I, the, there was a vision. I asked and I began to see him in visions. I could never see his face. And then finally when he came to my church, uh, I literally, I know a lot of people have problems with hearing God's voice, but I literally heard the Lord say, this is he. And when he told me that, I said, now how am I I'm going to act? He's at my church. He's going to be preaching. And this is the man I'm going to be marrying. So this is the way God brought us together. On that day, which was July the 10th, 1985, we were at my church having a revival with him there with Danny Kelly. And when I went home that night, I, before I went home, I said to him, we're going to be going to a Jesus Midwest this Saturday, will you be going? He said, no, I'm going to go um, Thursday and Friday because I have to go see my parents. So I got home that evening and I said to the Lord, Lord, now you just told me that that was my husband, even though I didn't want one. I wasn't ready for one, so I felt. And I said, okay, Lord, if that's him, then mess up his plans and let him be there on Saturday. So... On Saturday morning, we got ready, and, and I went on to the Jesus Midwest, and I'm sitting in this one tent where they had a, a Christian a comedian. And while I'm sitting there, I hear this voice say, look to the right. So when I look to the right, there he was. He was standing there. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's here. And I'm sitting there. You know how we act when we get all giddy and silly. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just as giddy and crazy as I could be. I'm like, oh, my God. So the pastor's wife, uh, daughter, Michelle, was there. So I got to Michelle. I said, Michelle, see if you can get Evangelist Randall over. I just want to ask him a question. So she said, sure. So she went and got him. And, and I said, how are you doing? And it's, he says, I'm, I'm doing fine. You know, he had this, this <laughs> thing, this air about him. He says, I'm, I'm doing fine. So I said, um, I thought you weren't going to be here today. Now, I want you to hear what I asked God. I said, mess up his plans. When he spoke to me, he said this. He said, all my plans were messed up. <laughs> now, I want you to see, this is how God works. So when that happened, he said, why don't we walk together? So we're walking and then I noticed behind me there was an entourage of women. And I looked back and mm -hmm. all these women were following us. And these were all women that were, wanted him, the, wanted him to be his, their husband. And I didn't know them. I knew they were from the church that he went to. And I was like, okay, we need to go sit down somewhere because I don't know what's getting ready to happen here. I'm just talking. You know you know how women act. And I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't want to go through any of this. So we went and sat down, and, and we began to talk, and, and uh, we shared some things. And then, then we, my son came around. I introduced my son to him, and he awesome left. He right. left that Sunday. And so I was like glad because I was like, okay, God, I don't now. I now I'm free. He's gone. Now I don't have to think about marriage anymore. All is well. Well, I go to bed that night, and the Lord says, get up and write him a letter. Now I have my letter too, but I don't know where I put it. It's safe. I think it's in this chest that I can't open. He says, write him a letter. My oh, Lord, just wake me up later. I don't feel like writing a letter. So he says. I want you to write the letter. His voice is so strong and so so gentle at the same time. So finally I got up and, and I wrote him a letter. But prior to that, I had met your best friend, James Lee. And I had asked James Lee for uh, your phone number or something. I don't know what he gave me. But I decided to get up and write this letter that the Lord told me to write. And you got the letter. And then I'm moving faster. So then that following Wednesday, he called me. And we begin to talk and talk and, you know, these long-distance phone calls because I'm in Chicago, he's in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I was safe. I felt really safe that this isn't going to work anyway. It doesn't matter. So, <laughs> so um, we continued to talk, and a whole month was going by, and I think a week before the month went by, he, I noticed he was getting a little uh, um, 
distant and he said I don't want any distractions and I was like I'm a little offended here because now I'm a distraction but I said to him I said no I it's fine with me because I don't want to get married anyway so it's okay if I'm a distraction and so then I went back to the Lord I said Lord what is this all about why have you awakened my spirit like this and now I'm, I'm in touch with this man. So I prayed, and the Lord was showing me how hurt he was. And I said to the Lord that um, I wouldn't hurt him. I wouldn't hurt him or deceive him. Now, not knowing on the other end of this, he's praying, Lord, I don't want her to hurt me or deceive me. And so when we spoke that day, he said, he said he was, you wanted to hear those words. That's right. So when we got on the phone, See, because I, the reason why I wanted to hear those words, I had been hurt. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a very loyal man, uh, and most of the women I found that I dealt with was not loyal. Right. Um, next thing you know, they were here and there and, and everywhere. Okay. And so I, I couldn't deal with that. Okay, so... I was I had been praying and 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 I was like okay because I love the Lord so much I'm obedient even if I don't want to do it I'm obedient to God because of who he is and I, I we got on the phone and we began to talk and I finally said to him because I noticed in his voice he was he was backing off I said well I just want you to know I will never hurt you nor deceive you the same two words that he wanted to hear That's what and I he knew hear. then that God was moving in that That was it right there so when Those we, were the words yes. that freed me up. She said, I'll never hurt you, nor deceive, nor deceive you. you. Right. I had been deceived. I had been hurt, let down, disappointed. And so I wasn't willing to go through that again. And when she said those words, I knew she was the one. But again, I'm a fleshly guy. Even though I'm a man of God, I'm very fleshly at the time. And so I did not want to be alone with her. I did not want to uh, be in her presence in fear of the flesh because I didn't want to fail God. I knew that this was sacred because it was like when they heard that 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 I was uh, seeing her, they would talk, you got birdie, you. It was like, yeah, I'm like, what you talking about? You know, <laughs> oh, hey, I ain't I, sure I, stopping <laughs> myself, you know. I, I, but it was like, you got birdie, yeah. birdie, you. Talking about, so she was very known as a very sophisticated, very quality woman, uh, very uh, uppity. Yeah, she was known like that. That's the type of person she was known as. And for me, a street guy from from Detroit, the puller, I had to be bad. No. <laughs> so I don't know what the image was. I just know that that when we're talking about prayer, you really have to be specific. You really have to, and God will give you the desires of your heart. That's right. I was, I, I knew that at the time I, I did not want to marry. And then I was so carnal also about the marriage that I wanted a rich man with an attache case and, and, and money. That's all I wanted. I did not want to, an evangelist who was going around uh, asking for money, he has to do this for a living. That is not what I wanted. But God knew what was best. He yeah. knew the direction that I would go and what would be best the for power me. Power prayer. So I want to just say this as we are coming down to the last few minutes oh, that boy. you have to be specific with God. We met on, Ju on July 10th. He proposed to me on August 10th. We got married on August 15th. So in five days, just five days, we were married. And when you think five days of getting married and being, being together 32 years, I want to say to the audience, it has been a wonderful journey. We have had our ups and downs, which all marriages better have in, in order for you to understand each other. Because if you're just going along and you're giving in, eventually you're going to go this way. But the conflicts bring you closer. The conflicts yes. you get to know That's good. who you are. Because if you're just walking around plastic, 
people that no one knows you even your your spouse doesn't know you but when you can let your hair down you can get angry you can pout you can go into a room you can slam a door you can walk out you can do all those things and then you are or here and say hmm that's the real person that's the one I wanted to see I wanted to see when will the real person come forth because we put on ears when we first get together but it's better that you relax and enjoy one another because in relaxing and enjoying one another you trust one another so there's been a trust issue here not a trust issue a trust um, favor for both of us because I had to realize with him that I was on safe ground he's from the streets I'm from home and and I have a, a certain way of being he has a certain way of being but what we learn to do is complement one another and that's why one of the reasons we're still together, but the main reason we are is because of God. That's right. He put that super glue yes, in our did. relationship. Yeah. Well, listen, we promise you we're going to pray. I'm going to ask my darling, darling baby, I'm going to ask her to pray for you right now. I want you to stretch your hands towards the television mm -hmm. studio audience. want to thank you all for joining us tonight. And I want you to stretch your hands towards us. And we're going to pray that God answers your prayer, that you write God a letter tonight. I want you to write him a letter. I want you to make it plain. I want you to seek the Lord and, and get the mind of God of what your desires are. Write the letter. Make it plain to God. And we're going to pray for it right now. Next week on the broadcast, we're going to, uh, Lord willing, we're going to pray again for you. But right now, stretch your hands right now towards the uh, uh, television there. And we're going to pray that God hears your request and he hears your prayer right now. Father, we come to you right now, and I thank you so much for this time of just sharing how you have brought us together. And that, Lord, you are a God of promise. You are the promise keeper. You care for us. You care about everything that we do, everything we think, all of our desires, all of our dreams and our aspirations. So as I pray right now, hear the heart of the people who are calling on you and don't know yes. how or what direction to go. But, Father, you can bring it all together and channel it in the right way so that they can be blessed and they can receive what they've asked of you. So today, because of your word, it says, those things that you ask, you will not withhold any good thing from those who walk uprightly before you. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to email us at journeytogreatnessbc at gmail.com or go to our website, FWC Charlotte. Dot com and write to us and let us know how things are going and we'll continue to pray for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited that you have watched us today. And if you have been blessed by this program, we ask that you would consider writing up generous gifts and supporting us. Go to our email and click on give and support the ministry so we can stay on the air. Mm -hmm.